A new glass recycling spot is now located in the hilltop area. Local students are getting an up-close look at an ecosystem, and now is the time to dig into community gardens. All that and more coming up next on Tacoma Report. Hi, and welcome to this edition of Tacoma Report. I'm Angie Foster. Pierce County is now in the state's phase three COVID reopening plan. This means that sporting events can now have a limited amount of spectators. Physical distancing, mask wearing, and hand washing are still required for those with and without vaccinations in public spaces. Restrictions have also been lessened to make more people eligible for the vaccine. The governor also extended the state's eviction moratorium through June 30th. For more information about the governor's order, visit the governor's medium page. The Small Business Administration offers a number of COVID-19 relief programs. This includes the Paycheck Protection Program, as well as the Forgivable Loan, which helps businesses keep their workforce employed during the COVID-19 crisis. Also a part of this is the COVID-19 Economic Injury Disaster Loan, which provides economic relief to small businesses and nonprofit organizations currently experiencing a temporary loss of revenue. In addition, the SBA also offers the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant, which provides emergency assistance for eligible venues. To learn more, go to the Small Business Administration website. Earlier this year, residential curbside glass recycling collection for customers in single-family homes and duplexes was replaced with drop-off sites throughout the city. When this program first launched, there were four drop-off sites, but now a new location has been added. Hilltop Safeway, located on M Street, now is a site that is accepting glass and household batteries. For a full list of all sites, detailed location maps, hours of operation, and what is being collected at each site, visit TacomaRecycles.com glass. The Tacoma Police Department reminds us that spring can be a good time to tend to your home and its natural surroundings to maximize safety. The department suggests crime prevention through environmental design or SEPTED as an approach for reducing crime. There is much information online about SEPTED, but the basics for landscaping include cutting back vegetation and paying attention to fences and lighting. You don't want your shrubbery to fortress your property, just the opposite. Perpetrators of crime prefer low visibility, so open landscaping is best. Plants should follow the 3-8 rule with hedges no higher than 3 feet and tree canopies starting no lower than 8 feet. This is especially important around entryways and windows. As for lighting, keep front and back doors clearly visible and well lit. Fences should allow people to see in. Even if the fences are built for privacy, they should be of a design that is not too tall and has some visibility. To learn more about SEPTED, visit cityoftacoma.org slash SEPTED. Everyone knows that April showers bring May flowers, but April also brings gardening too. Community gardening, that is, which sprouts up all over Tacoma every year. Now is when you need to reserve your spot at a community garden near you or even start one up in your own neighborhood. Pierce County boasts a network of over 80 community food projects and Tacoma is home to more than 43 community gardens. The city partners with the Pierce Conservation District's Community Garden Program, so to dig into your gardening roots, check out their website at harvestpiercecounty.org. The Tacoma Arts Commission has announced the selection of Lydia K. Valentine as Tacoma's 2021 through 2023 Poet Laureate. As a wrap-up to the National Poetry Month, 2019 to 2021 Poet Laureate Abby E. Murray and the Tacoma Arts Commission will host Pass the Torch, a virtual poetry event at which time Valentine will officially be awarded the title. The free public event will be held Thursday, April 22nd from 6 to 7.15 p.m. right here on TV Tacoma. It will also be live streamed on the city's Facebook page and on Zoom. Recently, community partners came together to develop a curriculum that gives students a first-hand look at the aquatic ecosystem in their own backyard. Stacey Elifrit has more. 
A book with a mission to inspire students to explore the outdoors has helped to spark a robust curriculum around learning science with the sea as the classroom. Florida Sailor Sea curriculum is based on the book by Joe Gatos and Audrey Delella Benedict. And that's this book right here. So that started um, their initial uh, decision to hire an education coordinator to uh, write a curriculum and base it on this book. The Sea Doc Society began a series of workshops to create lessons and work with teachers, scientists, marine educators, and tribal members in creating this course. After sharing the curriculum, Tacoma Public Schools wanted the book and teachings to be offered to all of Tacoma's fifth grade students. And there's this wonderful dream team of, uh, of fifth grade teachers, the Sailor Sea leadership team that helps to translate the curriculum from its its form that where it's meant to be in person and um, change that into a like a, distill it down to what Tacoma teachers can do during the pandemic and for use with their uh, their platforms. The hope with this curriculum is to raise a generation of residents who take into consideration the sea and the watershed in their neighborhood into their daily lives. This project that they're working on with uh, Swan Creek and salmon enhancement just shows that you can take 2,400 students, 90 some teachers, and three community, four community partner organizations, and get something meaningful done. Luckily, through remote learning, students have more access than ever before to community partners and scientists who are related to this project. The work has been divided. Um, Pierce County Conservation District is going to be giving their macro invertebrate data to a bunch of schools. We're also looking at water quality at the Foss Waterway Seaport with our students, but we're doing it with aquarium testing strips that we um, use here in the aquarium and then the students can use them at home. Then we have Metro Parks Tacoma, who is going to be looking at the native and non-native vegetation in the stream. We also have Orcas Love Rain Gardens involved, who has been instrumental in putting rain gardens at a lot of our local schools, along with, of course, Junior Sea Docs, Tacoma Public Schools, and our funder, Mitsubishi. So it's really a great program with a lot of super passionate involved partners. For this year, the Salish Sea Heroes Project is focused around a salmon release into Swan Creek. Each of the community partners are surveying a different area of Swan Creek. That data will be provided to students along with some hands-on materials at home. And the heroes part of the project is the students will use this water quality data, vegetation survey data, and macro invertebrate survey data to decide where we release the actual salmon that we're raising in the seaport right now. In addition to releasing the salmon, the other part of this project is communicating to the public. What can you at home do to help protect the Salish Sea? Students are going to be invited to create an art piece about their journey. And that will be put together into a video that anyone can view. And we'll also be displaying the pieces here in the museum for our third Thursday in May. With the hope that the program will grow, this book and curriculum will continue to inspire students to explore their local marine ecosystem. For Tacoma Report, I'm Stacey Ellifritt. To find out more about this program and explore the Salish Sea curriculum, visit JuniorSeaDoctors.com. We're going to take a quick break and when we return, we've got some exciting news regarding the Walk Tacoma series. Stay with us. Welcome back to Tacoma Report. I'm Angie Foster. Celebrate Earth Month this April by exploring EnviroHouse workshops, social media, and web content. Whether you want to learn at a virtual workshop or want to give back through stewardship work, there is sure to be an event for you. Check out the city site for a calendar of events happening in Tacoma, as well as information on how to participate in Goose Chase Challenges. There is also information on Earth Day South Sound for events happening in the broader Puget Sound region. Visit cityoftacoma.org slash earthmonth to find out all this and more. Since January 28th, the Salvation Army has been hosting a temporary warming center located at 1110 South Puget Sound. The shelter will continue to serve single men through April 30th and provides access to temporary shelter as the city continues to explore other shelter options. For more information about the city's inclement weather resources, visit the city's webpage. 
The Tacoma Landmarks Preservation Commission is accepting nominations for the 2021 Historic Preservation Awards, which celebrate the best in preservation projects and programming. Nominations in seven categories can be submitted for consideration through Thursday, May 11th. To submit a nomination, visit the webpage, or for more information, contact the Assistant Historic Preservation Officer. The award ceremony will be held virtually on Friday, May 28th, from 6 to 8 p.m. on Zoom. The event is free and open to the public. Details are available at the Historic Preservation webpage. After being canceled last year due to the pandemic, the Daffodil Marine Parade is back and will be taking place on April 18th at 1130 along the Ruston Way waterfront. The numerous other events that usually go along with the Marine Parade won't be occurring this year in keeping with the governor's stay safe plan but people will get a great view of the colorfully decorated boats as they make their way along the parade route, which starts at the Tacoma Yacht Club and finishes along the Thea Foss Waterway. Boats from all over the Northwest and Canada are expected to participate this year. The Daffodil and Marine Festival have been occurring since 1934. For more information, go to the Tacoma Yacht Club website. The 2021 Walk Tacoma Series is back and has virtual walks launching April through July. Due to COVID-19, this year's series is currently available virtually on the free GeoTourist app. Upcoming walks are led by local experts and include touring the Tacoma Waterfront, Downtown Mural Walk, Hilltop Coffee Tour, Pride Walk, and more. To find out about this free series and how to participate, visit the Downtown On The Go website. It's here that you can also find out more information on revisiting last year's Walk Tacoma series. And finally, situated on the slopes of the hilltop neighborhood, the Tacoma skyline welcomes a new crown jewel. In this report, Laura Proctor provides an overview of this new affordable housing development and the public artwork that makes this project shine. Tacoma Housing Authority's newest affordable housing development, the rise at 19th, is anything but subdued. Boasting vibrant architectural design and a stunning piece of public artwork, this is a space that enthusiastically welcomes its residents' home. THA's job is to provide high quality affordable housing to people who need it. We try to do that in ways that help them succeed and help our city succeed. I am standing at the site of one of our newest constructions called the Rise on 19th. The Rise at 19th has 64 apartments for households and families of lower income. 14 of the apartments are set aside for veterans coming to us from homelessness. We tell ourselves at THA that both lovely and ugly are contagious. So we spend a lot of time on design and art. And behind me you see one of our newest installations of outdoor art called The Jewels by local artist Diane Hansen. The Jewels features three large illuminated globes made of glass and cord and steel situated on the grounds of this housing complex. The entire facility provides panoramic views of downtown Tacoma, the Port of Tacoma, and beyond. The Jewels uh, are inspired by our millery sculptures and what those are are giant spheres that have a sun in the inside of them in the center and then it describes the rotation of the planets, our planets around the sun. Another inspiration for the Jewels were beautiful bejeweled hat pins and I really like that they set a point for change just like the rise does because when one rises we all rise. <laughs> So I wanted it to show well in gray skies. I wanted it to show well in rain. The sunshine will illuminate it and cast beautiful shadows uh, across the patio here. Um, also, it glows at night. So I wanted it to be a, a pinpoint where somebody could say, yeah, the big blue building with that jeweled globe and have a lot of pride when they could talk about it. Tacoma Housing Authority believes public artwork like the jewels, is essential for creating high quality, distinctive, and beautiful spaces for people to not only live, but call home. We like to include art in, in our design, both indoor and outdoor art, for several reasons. One is we try to make our properties feel welcoming to the people who live in them so that 
they can see themselves in the property design. We like it to fit into the neighborhood and have our neighbors feel the same way. And we like to splash color around our city. And art is a way to do that. You can view the jewels, day or night, from the corner of South 19th and South G Streets on the campus of The Rise at 19th. For Tacoma Report, I'm Laura Proctor. The $21 million project started construction in the summer of 2019 and is now available for occupancy. Check out the rise19.com website for more information. That's all the time we have on this edition of Tacoma Report. A great way to find out about the services the City of Tacoma has to offer is by going to cityoftacoma.org. Until next time, I'm Angie Foster. Thanks for watching.